Megan, thank you so much for joining us here today. I really appreciate the time that you're taking to chat with us. And we wanted to pick your brain a little bit about how you're using Easily with your students and how you're incorporating it into the classroom. Can you tell us a little bit about your school and the subject area that you're teaching and the students that you're working with? Sure. Um, I teach at a public charter high school in South Carolina, um, and mostly I teach English 1, which is a freshman level um, English class. So we are a project-based school, which means that we try to do as authentic tasks as possible and and really pursue a line of inquiry um, to develop some sort of authentic product. Um, So the infographics really worked great in in our kind of setup because it's such an authentic text. Okay. And are you um, incorporating infographics across all your classes then? Um, Across all the English one, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you started to uh, tell us a little bit more about why you started to introduce infographics in the classroom with your students. Were there any other driving factors in terms of uh, why you decided to use this particular tool? Yeah, I I think we've used more traditional text for a long time, um, the typical research essay or or paper. And I started to notice a shift in terms of the types of text that I was reading, just like as a reader in the world, right? So as I'm starting to see more visuals being incorporated with your typical traditional text, I just figured, you know, the students are reading this, they're encountering this, why wouldn't they also be producing this type of text? Because, you know, the world is changing and and literacy is changing. So I just want to be more in line with that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just as a business professional right now in the world, visuals are definitely very, very prominent right now. And that's what most people are focusing on. So it's interesting to see that you're already starting to introduce the importance of that concept to your students in this way. Um, Now, what was the topic? Yeah, so this came after um, our discussion of To Kill a Mockingbird, which is, of course, a classic work of literature that deals with a lot of different social justice topics, such as race and class and gender and religion. So we were having some really good discussions with the text, and I wanted them to dig a little bit deeper and start to make some connections between this text from, from the 1960s that was about the 1930s to our current world. So um, we kind of branched off after the the reading of the novel to a little bit more research into today's world. And this um, infographic was kind of the culmination where they could put all of their research, all of their findings into one visual um, text or product. Okay, interesting. What resources outside of the actual uh, To Kill a Mockingbird text did your students use for research purposes? They use mostly digital text, um, things that they would find online, census reports, um, a lot of polls, statistics that they could find um, that was anything really that was related to the prevalence of the issue, like the definition of the issue, um, people's perspectives on their topic and their issue were, were the biggest things. Okay. And what were the assignment details or instructions that you gave to students? Can you walk us through that process? Sure. So at the beginning, I I just kind of laid it out for them. Like we really spent a a while looking at what infographics were because a lot of students hear that word and they're like, I don't, like, what is that? You know? Um, So we looked at a lot of examples. Um, You can just do a simple Google search and find a ton of, of pretty good quality infographics out there. And then we looked at that and we said, okay, well, if we break this text apart, what are the components of it? And we started talking about information and what types of information are used. We talked about design. Um, We looked at, you know, color and color scheme and creativity and what types of actual graphics were being used. We looked at spelling and professionalism and grammar and really all the details of that infographic. That, that we just brought in. And I, and I tried to get examples related to social justice too, just so they could kind of see a little bit more clearly what they were going to be doing. We looked at some different pamphlets, some different literature out there about like guiding students in creating infographics. And as I'm sure you know, there's a guide on easily that kind of walks you through what are the, what are the parts of the infographic and some design features. So that was very helpful as well. Oh, good. I'm glad that that uh, was helpful to you. Yeah. (laughs) Good. 
And now in terms of that process, what might be some instructional tips that you might have for teachers who may be interested in introducing infographics with their students and some of the projects that they might work on? One of the things that I did, so I've done this two years now, this project, and the first year I didn't really have the students do like a practice one. They really just kind of jumped into creating from scratch their own infographics. So this year I, I had them do just a little bit of playing around, experimentation with the different features, uh, texts and shapes and the different graphics that were already available. So they got a little bit more familiar with the tool, which I think was helpful in just experimenting and, and playing, right? Because that's really how they learn about technology is just using it. So um, same thing with this website, with the tool. So, so giving them additional time to just practice with it before doing some pretty specific modeling in terms of, well, you know, this is how instead of leaving your text just hanging, you can add in a background or this is how you can layer things or you can use the cloning feature or or draw or things like that. So there was a good bit of modeling where I'm up at the front of the classroom and and just kind of showing the different um, features and tools. And then a student's watch took some notes then? Yes. And then then just... um, we, they had like a workshop where they were working on their own infographics and I was able to walk around and try to give some feedback. And um, if they said, you know, I really want to add my own picture, how do I do that? Then I was able to do a little bit of some one-on-one instruction as well. That's good. And, you know, a good point that I thought you had made in the article that you wrote was that students might need some more help in certain aspects of the project. So the modeling is, is what helped you kind of work through all that? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Just being able to show them. And and what that took was, you know, I had to play with it a lot before I felt comfortable being able to to show them how to how to do different features. So that's great, because I know that when you kind of go into a project, I'm sure that, you know, there's always some challenges that come along across the way. So it's good to know some of those. But ultimately, you really had a lot of great outcomes from this. And you were able to share a few examples of some of the student work that you had. What were those outcomes from the project itself? I, I think a lot of students had a really great understanding of design features and, and could make something that was cohesive as well as coherent and delivered a really powerful message. So uh, several students produced texts that were, were things that you would see in, in uh, the digital sphere. You, you would see in coffee shops or, you know, hanging from bulletin boards out in um, the public atmosphere. So that was really good, just the design features. But also some of the students really impressed me with the types of information that they found that were that was really going to, to back up their overall argument about their social justice topic. So there were some pretty convincing texts being produced. Yeah, I'm just taking a quick look at the images and I'm seeing that there was one on uh, the gender wage gaps in the U.S. And of course, they went ahead and they formally cited all their sources. So it was easy for me as a reader, you know, taking a look and seeing, you know, what were those original sources in terms of where they were getting their their data. And then the other example that um, was posted, it was just a reach away from ending hunger. And what I loved about that one was the design element of that infographic and how they were able to incorporate design along with all of the data uh, in order to reflect their message. So I thought that that was really great um, that they were able to do do that in, in a student project. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of citing sources on the infographic, did you have to do anything special in terms of discussing that with your students at all? Because I know that they might be used to, you know, citing their sources for other types of projects, um, but was there any type of uh, tips and suggestions that you had given your students? Yeah, this was actually a really good way to kind of scaffold them. Like in in ninth grade, um, in our school, we're really focusing on just the idea of citation. Why do we cite sources? How does that help us to establish our credibility? And then how does using credible sources kind of advance that as well? So this kind of came in before we started talking about formal citation formatting like MLA or APA. So this was kind of helpful because really I gave them some options when we looked at those uh, mentor texts. I, I said, you know, look, look how they're citing their sources. Some of them do it by URL. Some of them do it by the name of the organization. So you can kind of be free and flexible in that. But instead of being as intensive as MLA formatting, doing this more 
uh, URL style or um, organization name style was more accessible to the kids. But it, it, at the same time, it reinforced that idea that you can't just make up information. You can't just put information that other people have published and present it as your own. So good discussions about credibility as well as academic citation versus more authentic citation. And were you collaborating with anyone else at your school on any of these projects? I know sometimes teachers collaborate across uh, subject areas or even with the library or media specialists. Just wondering if it was managed just within the English class or if maybe any other teachers were involved. This was mostly within the English class. Um, I do work pretty closely with our social studies teacher, history teacher, to kind of discuss, we discuss similar ideas sometimes, but this one was mostly an English class project, but trying to get those infographics out into more public atmospheres, like putting it up in a lunchroom or, or whatnot, um, is a great way to get other students curious and asking questions. Yeah. And what were students, um, what were their thoughts about the project as they were working through it and then once they completed the project? I think a lot of the students, as, as we were doing it, as we were working on the infographic in class, really enjoyed it because I think they like being creative. They like designing and, and um, composing things, especially, you know, when you get into more non-traditional things because it's so new and kind of exciting for that, for that respect. Um, so a lot of, a lot of excitement about it. Um, not going to say that there wasn't any frustration, which would sure. just come with, you know, using a new tool or, or doing a new thing. So overall they were really excited. I, some of the students you could tell were so, um, so proud of their work, you know, they're turning them in in these little page protectors and um, <laughs> design and presentation folders and things like that and, and turning them in like, you know, here, look, you know, this is the culmination of, of lots of hours of work. So um, I think I think overall it was a very successful project because the students were engaged, they were motivated um, and overall they did some some really great and powerful work. Okay, that's that's really great to hear that their thoughts were uh, generally positive. You know, I know that there's always, you know, some um, struggle with some projects. And I think that's, you know, all a part of learning. But ultimately, when, you know, students feel really uh, great about what they're producing, I think that goes a long way. So do you have any thoughts on future projects that you'll be working on when it comes to Easley? Or, you know, would you change anything in terms of how you manage this uh, project? Yeah, I think I think what I want to focus on in the future is um, the authentic audience aspect. It's it's kind of tough to um, have students buy in on a certain level if they don't realize that this is maybe going to even go out into the the greater community. So trying to encourage students to post it um, digitally on social media or put it up in actual public um, environments is kind of where I want to get them. You know, where we're really or or sending it out to organizations who work with. Um, the types of problems that they're trying to combat. So I guess that would be the one thing I'd focus on in the future. Okay, yeah, that's really interesting, kind of getting um, some real-world feedback in a, in a sense and getting it out there in the real world to see y what type of impact it might make. Right, absolutely. Okay, that's good. Okay, wonderful. Um, so... I think we've got a really good understanding as to how you were able to uh, facilitate the project with your students and talk a little bit about the outcomes. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to mention or discuss when it comes to uh, doing this project with students or something that teachers should keep in mind if they are looking to attempt uh, working with infographics with their students? I think as long as the teacher is, you know, excited about it and willing to learn along with the students, I think it'll be a really positive experience for everybody. Okay, well, that's good to hear. Well, thank you so much, Megan, for joining us and chatting a little bit about the project. This example is perfect for people to learn from, and hopefully it's something that they can work with and incorporate into their projects as well. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Megan.